Good morning, everyone. How are you? We are here to talk about science and God. Now, in the past 100 years, we have made more scientific advances than in all of human history. It is truly remarkable. But unfortunately, what we're going to see is that we've turned those advances around, we've turned those revelations around, and actually used them as a weapon against God instead of giving glory to God. When I was in um, college, I studied cellular molecular biology. That was my major. And we were studying this gene just for a very simple uh, bacteria. And the gene regulation was so complex, so intricate, with so many interdependent parts, that I went to the professor. Now, I'm not a believer at all at this time, guys. I'm far from the Lord. I was, I was really bad. And um, I said to him, I said, there ain't no way that this could evolve. It's impossible. I said, there's too many parts. It just, it's, it's designed. You can see it. And I wasn't trying to find God or anything. And he looked at me and he said, you're right. And I said, well, then how did it happen? And he says, we don't know, but it just did. Just accept it. And so was, you know, a rebellious college person who doesn't want God in their life. I'm like, okay. But I knew even at that point that there was design in the world. I want to give thanks to this talk to uh, Frank Turek and Greg Kokel. They have done a lot of work on this, and I will largely be presenting the things that they have taught me over the years. So do science and evolution, do they disprove God? Well, the short answer is no, they do not. They want you to think that they do, but it's a lie and an intentional deception, which I will show you. In fact, the evidence really points from true science that God must exist, not that he doesn't exist. We're going to have two parts. We're first going to look at science, and then in part two, we're going to look at creation evidence, and what about evolution? Let's have some fun. Let's start with a little uh, experiment here. I'm going to weigh Pastor Daniel. Who wants to know how much Pastor Daniel weighs? <laughs> I picked a man notice, not stupid. <laughs> Pastor Daniel, come out here. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Right, we're we're going to weigh you, okay? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Um, I just, I'm a little confused, though, because I can't really get weighed with that, I don't think. Why not? Um, it's not a scale. Am I off base on this? <laughs> it's not a scale, right? So I can't, you can't weigh me with well, that. Well, if I can't weigh you with this, then you don't exist. I guess I don't exist. You don't exist. You can go. All right. Well, that was fun. Thank you. <laughs> now, that's absurd, isn't it? I mean, this is not designed, right, to measure weight. It can't measure weight. So how can I make it or use it to say he doesn't exist? But that's exactly what science does. It says that because we can't prove it, then God doesn't exist. They make the same mistake. We will come back to this. Now, this is a measuring stick. This is not a weapon. I stole this from my wife when I'm bad. She chases me around the house with it. <laughs> Let's put it away for now. I'm not bringing it back. She had, notice she picked a steel one, so it hurts. <laughs> so what is science? We need to define it because this term is used to beat down anything that invokes God or the supernatural these days. What is it and is this definition legitimate? Well, first of all, science is a methodology. Okay, science is a methodology. It is a basic philosophy for determining and gaining knowledge of the material world that we see. And it uses observation and generalization, right? It's called the scientific method, where you formulate a hypothesis, you do an experiment, you gather data, you replicate that uh, experiment, and then you come up with a theory. That's what science actually is. I can, I can tell you that that's true. I did it. In medical school, I did scientific research in a biology lab. I published four papers as the first author doing this exact type of replicative research, repeatable experimentation, okay? So I, I have the authority to speak on this. But there's also another form of science that they don't want you to know about that's different. It's called historical or origin science. And that's where you can't repeat anything. You can't do experiments. You just look at some data and come up with your own theory about what happened in history, things in the past. 
And this is completely different and it's an important distinction because everything with supernatural God falls into this category, you see. The first thing you need to know about science is this. Science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. Remember that. Science itself doesn't say anything. Scientists do. People who have made an interpretation of facts. So don't let anyone tell you that science says this or science says that. No, no, a scientist says it, not science itself. And this is very important because there's another form of science, and now it's not really science, but they've called it science, and this is science the philosophy. This is the second form of science that's not really science. They've labeled it that way. Well, what is this? This has five components to it. This is a theory that says only science provides re reliable truth. That's their theory of the existence of our universe. Only science provides reliable truth. Now, this sounds very high-minded and good, doesn't it? We you experiment and we figure out you know, what things are, and that's how we know truth in the world. But it's not, it's not, it's not accurate, and I'm going to show you why. Now, number two, this theory assumes that there is no supernatural intervention in the world. There is no God, that all things are governed only by natural law. It assumes it as fact. Richard Dawkins, who's a famous atheist, let me read you a quote from him. Biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. Now look at that. He's saying that there is the appearance of design in biology and for a purpose. But he's saying just the appearance. In other words, he's saying, but that's not what it is. Now, how does he know that? Did science tell him that? No, it did not. Science didn't tell him anything to do with it. This is just his own theory that he's purporting as truth. That's what's out there. Number three, it assumes that natural is 100% natural. What do I mean by that? Well, the Bible says that God holds all things together by the power of his word. That would mean that when you cut yourself, it doesn't necessarily heal on its own, that God is probably active in everything, even the beat of your heart. They assume that, that when you cut yourself and it heals, it just heals by itself because it heals. But what if God is holding all things together by the power of his word and he's active in everything, even the beat, very beating of your heart? We don't know, they don't know that, that natural is 100% natural. Here's the fourth thing that they do with this. Anything that doesn't conform to this theory that there is no supernatural intervention in the world, only natural laws are true, if it doesn't conform to that, then it's not scientific. Now, isn't that clever? Because science isn't saying anything bad about creation or intelligent design or God. And remember, science doesn't say anything at all. It's scientists that are saying it. But they put this label on there, not scientific, if you invoke anything supernatural or God. Now, this is not a tested fact of science at all. That's these statements here about that there's no supernatural intervention in the world and everything's governed by natural, that wasn't, that's not even proven by science. What they've done this is a philosophy of life, guys, or a, its own religion that they have labeled as science to give it credibility. They have hijacked the term of science to bring intellectual sophistication to their worldview as a weapon against God. Because it has nothing to do with science. Yes, scientists are saying it. Let me give you an example of how this works. I'm going to do a little dialogue back and forth here between two people. How did we get here on Earth? Someone asks. What? From evolution in millions of years, duh. Everybody knows that. Well, I believe that God created us and the entire universe. The actual evidence strongly favors creation, not evolution. What? That's not scientific, that's religion invoking God. Science has proven we evolved over millions of years from Darwin. Only science provides reliable truth. Hmm. This is very interesting. Now, notice several things here in this little exchange. 
some of which I've already pointed out. Number one, this person is assuming that science is on their side, aren't they? Science doesn't really have a side. Number two, they used not scientific as a negative blow to that person's view about creation, didn't they? It was a, it was a negative jab. That's not scientific. Hmm. They're labeling the other view as religion, not science. It doesn't make any sense just because what if, the, the, what if the, some of the evidence does point towards that there's a God who exists? And we know that's true. Does that make it not science and religion? No. He's assuming science is the only way to provide reliable truth. I'll show you that's false. And he falsely stated that uh, science has proven evolution. That definitely ain't true. We'll get to that in the second part. So all these things are unjustified. This is trickery here with this science, the philosophy being used against God when it has nothing to do with science. They've labeled the term science and put it on there to trick you into thinking you're not intellectual if you believe in God. Now, here's the problem for them. There are three fatal problems for this science, the philosophy. This idea that only natural things occur. There is no supernatural. Number one, science, the philosophy, commits suicide. It kills itself. It's a self-defeating argument. Let me show you why. It can't pass its own test. It can't pass its own test. Science is the only source of a reliable truth cannot be proven by the scientific method. Here's a box of truth. Everything that is true is going to be put into this box, and it has to filter through the scientific method to get in there. That's what they're saying, right? Only science provides reliable truth, so, and nothing gets in this box unless it is filtered through science. But the trouble is their theory, their philosophy can't get in there. It can't be proven by the scientific method. It's a self-defeating argument. And it's worse than that for them. It's much worse. Science is stealing from God in doing this. Science doesn't operate, guys, in a vacuum. Science can only be performed by scientists by stealing several immaterial realities from God. The order of natural laws, the laws of mathematics, the laws of reason, the laws of logic, they're not proven by science. They're already in this box. If they didn't exist, science couldn't be done. They're stealing from God. They're depending upon the supernatural to exist and these higher things to exist to even do science at all. And they don't even realize it. Number two, science can't measure the supernatural. We started off with this example, right? Science can't rule out anything about the immaterial world. It's, it's like this, this um, yardstick here. It's not designed to do that, right? It's like trying to m measure the weight of the man with this yardstick. It doesn't work. So you say the man doesn't exist. It's crazy. Science says God doesn't exist because they say they can't prove that he's there. It doesn't make any sense. Ruling out, guys, what can't be proven by science is circular reasoning. I don't see the invisible man, so he's not there. Science has never, ever advanced empirical evidence against God and the supernatural world. It has only assumed, assumed that it is not there. Not once. Has it ever advanced any empirical evidence against God? And number three, this philosophy of science has the whole system rigged. It's rigged. Any evidence from actual science, from the scientific method, real science, that points towards creation and intelligent design, and there's a lot of it, I'm going to show you some of it, is automatically disqualified as religion. Real data. Modern science has not concluded from the evidence that design is not a tenable theory. 
it is only assumed that it's true. How unscientific, how ironic that so-called scientists are dismissing evidence. In fact, it's worse than that. They've impeded science. When I studied DNA back in cellular molecular biology, at that point, there was something called junk DNA. Junk DNA was the vast majority of DNA, about 97% of it. And um, it didn't seem to have any function, any coding to it. I can't get into the details of DNA today, but and, and, and all the evolutionary people said, see, that's the evidence for evolution, that, that over time, this DNA was used and used and used, and it kind of accumulated as junk. So the 98% evident, uh, junk DNA that's not being used by the body is evidence for these millions and billions of years, you see. And so they never researched junk DNA because they assumed that it fit their little theory. They didn't research it. Well, now we know it isn't junk DNA at all. It's all functional. So who impeded science? They did by their own predispositions. And even more ironic is the newest scientific discoveries are stacked way against them. And they know it. They know it. Let me read you a quote from Richard Lewontin, Dr. Lewontin, evolutionary biologist at Harvard University. This is unbelievable. Wait till you hear this. We take the side of science in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs. Now, let me stop right there. We take the side of science. Science doesn't have a side. His philosophy has a side, but science doesn't have a side. Remember that. In spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated commitment to materialism, we are forced by our a priori adherence to material causes to create an apparatus of investigation and set of concepts that produce material explanations no matter how counterintuitive, no matter how mystifying to the uninitiated. And then he gets to the point. Moreover, that materialism is absolute, for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Guys, this is sad. But this is the society we're living in. It reminds me of Romans. Professing to be wise, they became fools. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. His eternal power and Godhead so they are without excuse. That word suppress means to, it was a nautical term where you steer the ship into the wind against the current on purpose. You heard it from them. You've heard two of them quoted. The appearance of design. He knows it looks like it's designed. And then you heard it from Dr. Lewontin. No matter how counterintuitive, no matter how mystifying, we cannot let God in the door. How unscientific is that? In the face of evidence, they know it's there. Why do you think he's saying that? Let's move on to part two. So what about creation, evidence, and evolution? The two are related. The two are related. There's three fatal problems for evolution. Three of them. Number one, Darwin proved nothing for evolution of the goo to the zoo to you. The idea that there was a big bang where everything came from nothing and over millions and billions of years that expanded into this universe that we have and somehow life evolved. That's called from the bang to the goo to the zoo to you, right? 
Now, just stop for a minute. What's more hard to believe? That everything came from nothing by chance and somehow evolved into this? Or that God did it? That's not an escape patch. Well, you, you're making God, invoking God. Well, I mean, what's more, what takes more faith to believe? Come on. Darwinian evolution, guys, must first prove that life comes from non-life. That's called abiogenesis, right? It's never been proven or even shown to be possible. The first objection to evolution is nobody knows how it happened, so how can they say that it has happened? Darwin did show that a species can adapt over time. The finches changed their beaks and everything. But you know what? They were still finches. People don't realize that. They made a jump from finches changing minor characteristics, which is true, microevolution, if you want to call it that, to somehow everything came from nothing and everything evolved. It's ridiculous. They were still birds. Darwin did show a species can adapt over time. Macroevolution, this idea that, that, that there's a new species transforming into new ones, it's not happening now, and there's no evidence that it happened in the past. The transitional fossils that they need aren't there. They don't have them. Don't let any of them tell you that they do, and they know it. And then there's things in biology we could spend all day on this called, there's something called an irreducible complexity. I talked about it a little bit at the beginning, this idea with some things in biology where, you know, if, it, if, it's, if nothing works till it all works, the system doesn't work unless all the parts are there, but you can't sequentially bring the parts in because the system wouldn't work. It wouldn't function. There's lots of them. In the DNA, for example, the, the reader, the coder for the DNA is encoded on the DNA. So if you need the coder to decode it to make the coder, where did it come from? It's a chicken or egg thing. There's no explanation. There's no way that it could evolve to fit in there, because it's encoded on the DNA, it comes from it, I mean, it's crazy. Well, someone objects and says, no, wait a minute, I've got you here, Dr. Beeman, because chimp DNA is 98% the same as humans. Chimp DNA is 98% the same as humans. Well, that's true. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm not saying Pastor Aaron looks like a monkey. I had to use some person's picture. For the record, Pastor Aaron, I don't think he's here to... I'm not laughing. They are. <laughs> you guys are bad. But here's the thing. It's true, 98% the same as humans, but... 2% of 3 billion base pairs of the DNA, which, and that's how many there are, that's 60 million, that is 2,500 page books of new information. 2,500 page books of new information just in that 2%. So, no, sorry, that's a lot more information, guys. Now, number two, information does not evolve. These are our points against three fatal problems for evolution. Number one, Darwin proved nothing about the, nothing in favor of the goo to the zoo to you. Number two, information does not evolve. If you find a blueprint for a building with a detailed plan and instructions, right? Let's say you find that in the forest. Do you conclude that over millions and billions of years that this blueprint came into existence? Who would do that? You wouldn't do that, would you? It's obvious from the picture, if you look at it, that... Somebody designed it. You can see the design in the picture, can't you? Well, if you would do it for that, then what about the DNA? Let's go back to this DNA. This is our genetic material. We have three billion base pairs. That's 10 times 10 to the 12th bits of information. It is a digital code, guys. It is digital code encoding 100 million pages of an encyclopedia. It has the instructions encoded to make a human being in all of its parts. 31,000 genes specify 200,000 different proteins. It is more complex than any known storage system. 
And yet we somehow conclude that this happened by chance. It's impossible. Information does not evolve. It is put in by an outside source every time and everybody knows it. It's common sense. And when we discovered DNA back in the 50s, we should have gone in the direction of, wow, we have now absolute evidence for God, and we've done the exact opposite. The truth is suppressed in unrighteousness. This is unmistakable. And that doesn't tell you which God it is or anything like that, but it tells you, hey, this idea of a big bang and everything happening by accident is absolutely false. And they know it. And number three, evidence against evolution, is what we call the fine-tuning of the universe. If you find an aquarium, let's say you come home today from church and there's an aquarium in your house. You don't know how it got there. And the aquarium's got water in it and it's the right temperature and there's food and there's plants and there's an oxygen bubbler and there's fish in there and they're happily living and swimming along. So it's the perfect habitat for life. Would you say that that somehow came out of nowhere all by itself or that it took billions of years but now it's finally appearing in your house? No, you would know from the aquarium that it, someone designed this habitat for life. It's got all the right ingredients. Everything's perfectly attuned for those fish to live. And yet, when we find in our universe, cosmologists have calculated the odds of a life-friendly universe appearing by chance are less than 1 in 10 to the 123rd. I can't even give you an analogy to tell you how unlikely that is. We've heard some other analogies, right, with the silver dollars in Texas and like that, and you're picking one out. This is way beyond anything like that. There is no analogy. That's 10 raised to the power of 10 with 123 zeros after it. In other words, the laws of the universe, guys, match the narrow band of parameters required for life. And it's finely tuned. And they know it too. Listen to what atheist cosmologist Fred Hoyle says. A common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as with chemistry and biology. He knows it. Because if you change one tiny thing with almost any constant or, or, or scientific constant, the, the weight of a proton, the gravitational force, any of these things, by a teeny fraction, we wouldn't be here. And there's so many of them. It's overwhelming. Gravity, the weight of a proton, the weight of an electron. It's like, it's like shooting a bullet across the universe and hitting the bullseye. That's what the odds are. So the evidence is overwhelming. And in the past 100 years, the evidence is way against Darwinian evolution. But the scientific community refuses to accept the data. How unscientific to put their own term back on them. So let me summarize for you. Number one, science can't measure the supernatural. That's not supposed to. It can't. Number two, science can't pass its own test as the only source of truth. Number three, science, the philosophy, is nothing more than an atheistic worldview labeled as science. That's all it is. Number four, science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. Don't forget that. Number five, modern experimental science, real science has advanced evidence that God must exist for information does not evolve. And there's a movement now towards intelligent design in parts of the scientific community. They've had to admit it, especially the DNA people. They know it. Now, they're not saying which God or anything like that, but they're saying, look, this did not happen by itself. There has to be a higher power. And let me just give you a little advice when dealing with this. Remember what I've told you and put them on the defense. Well, that's not scientific that you believe in God. Don't go into some dissertation defending what you believe. Say, well, what do you mean by that? What, what, explain, what evidence do you have to say what I'm saying isn't scientific? 
Make them explain it and watch what happens. Most of them won't be able to say anything. Make them make the case for why they're against you. Say, present to me your evidence that God doesn't exist. Don't go answering every little thing that they have. Now, to close, we know who did it. So we're not going to just give a talk on science and end there. Uh Uh-uh, not here at Coastal. Nope. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him all things were made, and nothing was made without him that was made. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Jesus Christ spoke the world into existence. The Father thought it. The Son spoke it. The Holy Spirit empowered it. If you are here today and you don't know this God, you need to. Because he custom designed your DNA, all three billion base pairs to make you the unique individual that you are. The Bible says that you are a poem of God. You are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for good works. That word workmanship in the Greek is poema. It means poem, a masterpiece, a special creation. You need to know this, God. If you don't, I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you do, and you've fallen or slipped away, and this happens to all of us, today's the day to come back. Because he's very, (laughs) God is so personal, it's unbelievable. And if you will let him work in your life, he will blow your mind. Jesus Christ came as the son of God to die for our sins. (laughs) He became a man. In the beginning was the word. Isn't it interesting? What is a word? It's letters, the right letters in the right sequence that produce life, isn't it? Right? A word, like if it's it's just gibberish, but the right letters of the alphabet in the right sequence forms a word. What's the Bible? It's a bunch of letters Scrambled and in the right order. Jesus is the word. Man is made in the image of God. We are a word, DNA. It's it's, it's made of four base pairs. It's a bunch of, it's four letters and the right sequence produce a human being. We are a word that becomes flesh. Even the DNA gives witness that we come from God's creation. And you know what the code is for DNA? Three. It's a code of three. The code is deciphered by three. You think that's a mistake? No. Even the Trinity is in the decoding of the DNA. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, whoever is here today that doesn't know you, I pray that they would give their heart to you because the evidence that you exist is overwhelming and we could go into the evidence for the resurrection, which is overwhelming another time, but you did it, you came, you died for our sins and now we have the opportunity of eternal life. If you don't know the Lord today, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I want eternal life. I repent of my sins. I turn to Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. I give you my heart. I accept you today, Lord. I'm hearing your call. I realize I'm here for a reason. Or maybe you've slipped away from the Lord and you need to come back. In the story of the prodigal son, the son that went away, the father ran to him. It's the only time in the Bible when God is in a hurry go back and he will run to you and meet you and celebrate with a party that you have come back to him. Pray that prayer and you have eternal life. Pray that prayer if you know him and get restored. Lord, we thank you for today. I pray that you work in people's hearts and let this body know that science, true science, is on our side. Thank you.